I'm just going to skip a couple slides here. So here is our agenda for today. We've got a lot to cover. Um, and in a nutshell, I just kind of want to introduce what multi-factor authentication is and, and go through the steps of how you go about signing in and enabling your users for multi-factor authentication. And along the way, we're going to talk about some of the issues that you may run into and how to uh, resolve those. So this is the primary based on just the, the kind of calls that we get from the customers, or the, 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 our common calls and issues. So just real quick, what is multi-factor authentication? Uh, this is basically a, another layer of authentication uh, for security and compliance reasons. So not only do you need to provide a username and a password, you also need to provide something else um, that proves you know, who you are uh, when you're signing into our services. In our case, for what we have available, you will be using some kind of device, uh, such as the office phone or a mobile phone um, or even a mobile app that we have available. And you might hear this called in different ways. Um, it could be uh, MFA, multi-factor authentication, TFA for two-factor authentication, or two-step verification. This feature comes from a something that became available in the Windows Azure Active Directory space. So you might also hear this called Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. And that's what this really is. So what we're not going to talk about in this presentation is some of the more advanced components of our multi-factor authentication service. Uh, and this is the server component. We'll, later on during this presentation, we'll talk about how you can go about and accessing these more advanced features. Um, but for the purpose of this, um, it will be outside of scope. So we're not going to talk about uh, the server component of this. But just real quick, if you're really interested, um, our, our MFA server component allows you to secure not just the Office 365 resources like Exchange and Link and SharePoint. You can also use our same service to be able to secure your on-premises stuff as well. Um, so whether it may be um, your remote desktop or virtual desktops, your maybe you have a local on-premises SharePoint, you can secure those as well. But I've got a link down here on the slide. So if you're if you're more interested in learning how to take advantage of our server component, you can go ahead and, and go to our website that talks about how to set that up. So with MFA for Office 365, this is what we call basic MFA or basic multi-factor authentication. This is what you're going to get included with your Office 365 subscriptions. So whether you have a, uh, an enterprise subscription or a mid-size subscription or any of the standalone offerings, like you just have a Exchange Online plan or a SharePoint Online plan, you will get these basic MFA features. So that is just the, the matter of being able to enable your users and admins. Um, they can sign in with multi-factor authentication. You can use a mobile phone app to be able to, to sign in, a phone call or text messaging. The advanced MFA features is where that server component falls in. So if you're really interested in using the advanced MFA providers um, or features, a day we'll, we'll talk later on on how you can enable that for your subscriptions. But just keep in mind that this will be a, an additional cost uh, to you to use the advanced multi-factor authentication features. So what, I'm, what I really like to do is I'm going to get out of these slides, and we're just going to go into live demonstration. So I'm going to show you how this works and then show you the common issues. So let me go ahead and share my Internet Explorer. Okay. 
Come on. There we go. Okay, so I'm on the Office 365 sign-in page, and I'm going to go ahead and sign in with a user enabled for multi-factor authentication. Later on, I will show you how to enable those users, um, but I think just to build some context around what we're going to be talking about later on, I think it's a better experience to actually show you how the sign-in experience looks like and then talk about those points. So here is a user that I have who is enabled for multi-factor authentication. And this is going to be my essentially first time of signing in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sign in. And what you get here is a set up now button. What this means is we're going to go ahead and set up multi-factor authentication for this user. They've been enabled, but we need to set up the, the devices that they're going to use to do that second factor authentication. So here, there's going to be uh, three steps. Uh, step one, you'll choose your primary method. Later on, you can choose a second or third or even fourth, um, four different methods that you can uh, sign in with. But we've got these options here. We've got a mobile phone number. We've got an office phone and the mobile app. Just real quick, one of the issues that you might see, you'll notice that I've selected office phone here, and you'll notice that I can't select the country, and I can't type in a phone number here. What this means is that this user um, may be uh, synchronized using directory synchronization. If that is the case, you may want to update their office phone in your local Active Directory or whatever directory that you may be using synchronizing to Office 365. So if you see, if so if you just see this grayed out and they can't select the country code, that's a pretty good indication that you'll need to update that in the local Active Directory to synchronize the user. So that's issue number one. And then you can also choose a mobile app. And then you can configure um, that mobile app. So oops, brings up to our next point, our next uh, issue. This And this is a pretty common call that we get, is there is a confusion around which app, mobile app to use. Microsoft has two applications out there for the Windows phone. One is the Microsoft Authenticator app, which is actually used for Microsoft accounts, uh, formerly called Windows Live ID. The other application is actually called the multi-factor authentication app or multi-factor auth app, depending on which store that you're using, whether if it's Google Play or on the Apple Store or the Windows Phone. So we actually have these apps available in all three stores. So that, that's a really big uh, to point out is make sure that the correct application mobile app is, is being used while you're setting this up. Otherwise, you're going to get some error messages saying, hey, we don't recognize um, this user ID or this security code. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to come back to the mobile phone, select my country, put in my phone number. You'll notice that my phone number here, I'm not really using any uh, special symbols here. We do support the dashes. So if we did the area code, dash, the three characters there, and then the four. Um, but if you were to put something else here, like let's say spaces, you might run into some problems later on. So it's, it's a common call that we get is, hey, I'm not getting the text message, or I'm not getting the phone call, or I'm getting this error message, what's going on? Um, and usually the number one cause for that is you're not putting in the phone number in, in the correct format that we accept. So uh, dashes are okay. Otherwise, you can also just leave it 
um, no spaces at all. If you put anything else in there, um, it, it may cause problems. Uh, I know each different regions have different formats that they may accept. Uh, if you're from the United States, it's absolutely fine if you did the, uh, the parentheses here like this in the air surrounding the area code. That's fine for United States phone numbers, but you want to be really careful um, or on the format that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and choose call me. Notice that we also have available here is the, the text message. So I'm going to click next. So the second step is uh, verify now. So we need to verify that this phone number actually works. So it should be calling me here soon. Just waiting for the phone call. It usually doesn't take too long. Come on. And of course, this is a demo, so this is not working for me. Where is the phone call at? This is fantastic. Okay, so we get an error message back saying it was not able to receive a response. Let me double to make sure my phone number is in here correctly. You got United States, okay, 425-633-7660. That's the correct phone number. That should work. Let's try this again. Verify now. There we go. Now I'm getting the phone call. So I guess that's another issue. So even though I had the correct phone number in there, it was just a matter of trying again. Uh, maybe it was a carrier issue. Um, I did get a voicemail from it, though. But let me go ahead and answer this. And you're going to get a voice automated system. Not sure if you guys can hear that or not. But basically, it's asking me to hit the pound sign. I'm going to hit the pound sign. There we go. I'm signed in, or it's now verified. And there we go. It's verified. So that's another common troubleshooting. Just maybe it's just a matter of trying again. All right. And then step three is you have to create app passwords to in order to access rich, uh, rich clients. But I'm going to save that portion for a day. He's going to talk all about app passwords a little bit later on. So for now, I'm going to skip this part. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and try to sign me in. It's going to call me because that was the method that I chose. There we go. It's calling me. It's working now. Hit the pound sign. I'm now signed in. And there we go. So normally, it's, it's pretty fast. Okay, now that I'm signed in, now the next question is, you know, what about, how can we change it later on? So once a user is in, they can go to Office 365 settings. And then we have this new option here called additional security verification. You'll go ahead and select that. And then you'll click on this link, update my phone numbers used for account security. And then here you can go back and you can choose, you can change your primary method. If you do that, it'll ask you to verify again. But for now, I'm just going to leave it to my mobile phone. And then you can choose additional methods. So I would, or we would highly recommend that you set up multiple methods. So just in case one method fails for whatever reason, you'll have other methods uh, available to set up. So, you know, a user may have multiple uh, mobile phones, so they can set up a second mobile phone number. 
uh, they have the office phone, they can set that up, um, and or they can use a mobile app. So again, you can use all four methods if you wanted to. Um, or technically, there's five methods because with the mobile phone, there's there's the, the call that we support and the text messaging uh, that we support. So they can have up to five methods here. Click cancel on that. Actually, let me go back. Sorry about that. And then this is now a perfect leeway into uh, passwords. So a day, you have the floor. Thanks for that, Bill. All right, so app passwords. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, app passwords, uh, what they are, um, how to set them up, uh, um, what signing in looks like, uh, how to disable it for your tenant, and, um, and we'll also be demonstrating most of these uh, features. So let me get the presentation up.